Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we are given that there are two quantities Ah, something caught my eye The question already informed us that these two quantities are in inverse proportion And therefore, I could straight away make use of the fact that Given any inverse proportion The two quantities x and y, when I multiply them up they give me a constant value k and given this table of values and that's what we are going to make use of okay my x and my y you will then see me substituting the value of y as 5 and when that happens the corresponding value of x will be 32 and therefore, 32 times 5 will then give me the value of k. So in this case here, k will be equal to 160. And so for part A, the equation connecting x and y would then be x times y is equal to 160. Part A is done. Let's move on to part B where we are now going to focus on getting the values using this equation. So for part B, we are given that x equals to 20 when y equals to p, meaning I just have to substitute into the equation x is 20, y is p, and this will give me 160 so I will then be able to get the value of P easily okay P will be equal to 160 divided by 20 A and again using this equation now that the question for the next set of values X is Q when Y is 16 so I would then have my Q multiplied by my 16 this will be equals to again 160 so I will then be able to find my Q just need to divide by 16 so my Q is equals to 10 and we are done with this example or this question let's move on to the next question Hello everyone, welcome to this video where we are given that Z is inversely proportional to the letter T or the quantity T and we are also given a value of X and a value of T so in order to do part A I would first need an equation connecting Z and T Okay, and knowing that they are inversely proportional to each other does help because this is actually the general equation and in this context I would then be able to apply them accordingly meaning that my T times my Z will be equals to k and we are also given the value of t and the value of z and that will enable us to find the value of k so in this case here the k will be equals to 252 so we would have our equation very important because this equation will help us to find part A, part B and part C okay so let's continue for part A now that we have this equation connecting T and Z find the value of Z when T equals to 12 that means I would have T is 12 Z and 
this will be equals to 252 so I will be able to find my Z I just have to have 252 divided by 12 and that will give me a value of 21 okay and using the same equation now that now I have given Z is 36 and this again will be equals to 252 so I will then be able to get my value of T so my T will be equals to 7 so this is for part B and now let's move on to part C <coughs> when a particular value of t is doubled so this is important that means when t is doubled we will have 2 times t right and when we have 2 times t that will be a new value of z okay and so in this case do take note every time we have a z how do we find z we always is 252 divided by t right and in this case here the t will be 2 t and let's see what happens to this new value of z okay um, I am going to rewrite this as I saw there's a 2 here this is what we are going to do I'm going to rewrite it as half times 250 over T why does Mr. Tan do that? because this 250 divided by t is happens to be my original value of z right and from this we could then deduce that the z every time we double the t z will be half its value okay so that will be the final answer therefore the new value new value of z will always be equals to half of the new original value of z with that we have come to the end of this question and let's move on to the next question hello everyone welcome to this question where we are given that n is inversely proportional to the number of slides l so this is a very important information because then i will later on apply my general formula for inverse proportion yeah So for part A, you will then also see me using this number of lines per slide with the number of slides for part A. Okay, part A then you will see Mr. Tan writing it as L times N equals to K and in order to find k i'm going to substitute l as 12 lines k as 30 so that i will be able to get 360 as the value of k and therefore the equation connecting n and l will be equals to 360. part a is done
Let's move on to part B where we are required to interpret this meaning of K found in T. Alright? And so, what does this mean when I have the number of number of lines L multiplying by number of slides and and they tell me that this number is 360 which is K Can you see it? This means that K is actually representing the total number of lines in this whole presentation. Alright? Okay, let's move on to part C. If there are 15 lines, lines is green color, 15 lines, what is the number of slides then? So, I'm going to substitute 15. We are supposed to find the number of slides n, and this one is equals to 360. So therefore, I will be able to find my number of slides in this case easily. This translates to 24. And we have come to the end of this question. And let's move on to the next question. Hello everyone, welcome to this problem where we are given that 15 workers can build a road in 30 days. And we also do need to assume that the time taken to build the road is inversely proportional to the number of workers. The very first thing to do when I solve this is actually I would like to make use of the fact that when I increase the time taken by the road, time taken to build the road, time, if I increase, then the number of workers will decrease and vice versa, meaning that if I decrease it, the number of workers will increase. And so this has implication of how Mr. Tan here is going to solve this question because knowing that they are inversely proportional means that the workers work at the same rate. Okay, so for part A, then you will see Mr. Tan writing this down. I will first have 15 workers and they actually took 30 days to complete this road. And now if I have five workers, and with them having work at the same rate, since they are inversely proportional, what would, how long would that take? So, here comes the catch. If I divide by 3 here, because it is an inverse proportion question, if I decrease, divide by 3, I'm going to increase by multiplying by 3. And that will give me 90 days. Alright. And that will be the answer for part A. And using this same understanding for part B then, given that now they give me 20 days. How many workers are needed for these 20 days of work? 
before I'm going to start off with the T days. Require 15 workers. How much would 20 days later on have? Okay, so I'm going to do slowly. I'm going to find 10 days first. Okay, meaning I would then have to divide by 3. And because it is an inverse proportion, I am going to multiply by 3 to give me 45 workers are required for 10 days of work. And finally, I need 20 days, right? So I would then multiply by 2. And so being an inverse proportion question, if I times 2, the other side will have to divide by 2. And I would then, this will give me 22.5 though. Alright. But, do take note going back to this question. Can I really realistically have half a worker? No, right? So the minimum amount of workers needed to build the house in 20 days then would therefore be number of workers required then bearing in mind that 22 workers I will not be able to complete in 20 days but 23 workers right and this one I would then have to round off to 23 workers for the final answer because it is not possible for someone to be half a worker. Mm. Well, that completes this question. And if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you and have a nice day.